So it says uh, particle of some mass, uh, let me start labeling, moves under the influence of some force. Okay, we're given functional form. That's usually an indicator that we are going to need to use calculus. Uh, if it's a speed that, okay, we are given some initial position and initial speed. And it's asking for us the final speed at some final position. Okay, um, I think they, um, so you, and so I, I guess there are different ways to go. You could actually just uh, go fall all the way back down to kinematics. Because given this amount of force, you could write down this expression for acceleration, force divided by mass. And given the acceleration, you can actually just, uh, you know, do the calculus stuff under the context of kinematics to just do that. You can, there's nothing wrong with it, but just because in this chapter, we introduced something called work kinetic energy theorem. Let me just use it <laughs> because we are in the work and energy chapter. So work kinetic energy theorem, or sometimes called work energy theorem, but I prefer this form because um, this is the context where the theorem was derived. So what it says is that net work done by all the forces, and that's important if you have other forces in the system, uh, that gives you the change of kinetic energy. So in the first part of the question, you are given enough, or you're starting to be given enough information to calculate net work. You are given some information about force, so as soon as they gave you some information about a displacement, you could calculate your network done as net force times a displacement. And for the change in kinetic energy, you are being given some information. So here we should be careful and say that's a final kinetic energy minus initial kinetic energy. So it's going to be one half mv final squared minus one half mv initial squared. I have non-zero v initial. So as soon as we know the left hand side, we can uh, treat the left hand side as a known quantity and solve the whole thing for final speed. And that'll give me the answer here. So that's the plan. The calculus part comes in in figuring out the left hand side because, um, um, you know, so this is the kind of a simple conceptual version, but when your force is a variable, when your force changes as a function of position, um, you can't just to do this. Um, you have to imagine taking your interval, so you are on the number line, x equals zero, uh, you are starting from x equals two and ending up at x equals seven, you have to imagine taking this interval, breaking it up into tiny little pieces, and handling it those tiny little pieces at a time. So for each of these tiny little pieces, we'll have interval dx. And for that interval dx, I have some value of x that I can use. And using that value of x, I can express my force to be a particular value. So let me start out with the setup. For this infinitesimal interval, there's an infinitesimal amount of work being done over that interval, and that will be given by amount of force at that position times the infinitesimal interval. Now, the question isn't asking us for infinitesimal work, or you know, the, in the rest of the problem solving, what we do need is the total amount of work being done going from this point to this point of the interval. So we have to integrate, we have to add it all up. That's what integration um, uh, operation is doing. So yeah, we have to do this integral. Let me just uh, finish writing it out and see what kind of expression we have. So we have x is equal to some initial, that's not zero, to the final. My first, oh, that looks complicated. Let me write it this way, uh, it's five times x raised to power minus one half, because that's going to make it clearer that this is a polynomial thing. So if I remember my polynomial integration formulas, I can do this integral. 
So the, uh, I'm going to factor out 5. And the antiderivative of x to the minus 1 half, it should be um, x to the 1 half. Because once I subtract minus 1 in taking derivative, I get that. And to cancel out stuff, there should be 2 here. So 2 times x to the 1 half is the antiderivative of that, I think. Make that try. <laughs> we'll see if I get the right answer. Going from x uh, initial to x final. Um, yeah. So let me uh, just plug in those, or let me just finish writing this up. So 10 times x final, or square root of x final, minus square root of x initial. Um, that's going to give me the total amount of work being done. So from this point on, I'll treat the work being done as a known quantity. And with the known quantity, I have to solve for the final speed. So final speed, I'm just going to do this algebra in my head. It's going to be uh, 2w over m plus v initial squared the square root it. So um, if you need to <laughs> pause and <laughs> make sure I didn't make mistakes in doing algebra in my head. Uh, by the way, uh, if you are noticing that I'm not being very careful with the units, it's because the question is written that way. It's written super sloppily. Like if a question wanted to be careful with the units, they really should have uh, given us a unit of this coefficient. Uh, so when the question is, so, you know, it should have said, oh, the coefficient is a unit of Newton times the square root of meter. That's what they should have done to be careful with the units. But instead of doing that, they just tacked on a unit at the end. And basically, in this form, x has to be in meters. Um, so because the question wasn't careful with the units, I'm also not careful with the units, other than that I'm keeping everything in basic SI units. Um, so okay, I think I have enough to just to do everything in Sage Math. Uh, oh, I could have done the integral in Sage Math. <laughs> but uh, let me just uh, define some variables. Um, x final, x initial, w. Uh, I don't think I need to define w. Uh, mass, um, v initial. Uh, I don't need the v final defined. Okay, so I'm going to say my work done is 10 times uh, square root of x final minus uh, square root of x initial, so my w. And my v final is going to be this expression, uh, square root of 2 times work done uh, divided by mass plus the initial squared. And on this expression, I'm going to do this numerical substitution. Uh, work, I'm going to leave it alone, because um, hopefully this will all get substituted in. We'll see. Um, so. Uh, mass of 8 kilogram, V initial of 2 meter per second, um, X initial of 2 meters, uh, X final of 7 meters. Okay, that's all the numbers. Um, yeah, let's see. Yeah, yeah, I gotta put this through a numerical. I forgot to put a dot somewhere. Um, so it'll do numerical. Um, approximate the decimal approximation uh, okay 2.66 meter per second so that should be right if i didn't make a mistake with <laughs> integration <laughs> good yeah, so, so that's it. Uh, so whenever you, so again there aren't going to be that many questions that makes you do this uh, calculus stuff when it does, uh, make sure you imagine breaking up in the entire interval into tiny little infinitesimal interval and start out with that as uh, your starting place for setting up your integral. And uh, that, so I think, is the most concrete advice I can give. And you are going to see one other time in this semester when you have to do this kind of integral that's coming up soon when we do rotation. Uh, so, so that's coming up. <laughs>